Hey everybody, it's Armageddon time and it's the Lit Critics once again. And uh, as always, Necro VMX. With him as always, <laughs> A Tale of Dicks and Clits Eternally Retold. Mm hmm. So I have uh, I have a bunch of different lists. You guys reacted well to mixing it up a little bit, but we're only going to mix it up a little bit. It, we, it's mostly video game stuff. As usual, uh, we have some top twenty-five lists and some top, top ten lists. So it all still uh, evens out to a hundred. And as always, we will rate them based on how many they are. So like for the top ten list, we'll rate them from one to ten. Mm -hmm. Top twenty-five, we'll rate them from one to twenty-five. Why not? Right? Sounds good to me. Okay, so why don't we start with the top 10, I'm sorry, top 25 oh. video game consoles of all time. Oh, man, there's going to be some speculation spit takes through this one, tell you that. Well, this is from uh, IGN, so... Oh, big name. It could, uh, yeah, it could, it could be great or it could suck. Hmm. I haven't I haven't looked at it yet, so this is the, my first time hearing what's on here, so I may be surprised. Oh, good. So let's start with number 25, okay. the Magnavox Odyssey. Now, hmm. certainly when you, I, I think when you have a, a 25, you have room to put a lot of shit on there. And certainly it was important as being the very first console ever, so I guess I can see that being like number 25 on the list. What do you, what do you think of that? Yeah, like, there certainly is a place for most, maybe, important, and yeah. the, the Odyssey being one of them. What, what was it, yeah. the first one that had interchangeable carts? It was the first console, period. Oh, just, oh, okay. Yeah, it was. there wasn't anything before. It came out in 1972. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, okay, number 24, maybe if we were doing... 25 worst consoles I can understand. <laughs> but you know what? There's not there's not enough consoles, so I guess you're going to have some shit on here. Okay. But uh, number 24 is the Atari Jaguar. E really? Yeah, what this, the fuck? This is 25 best, right? I that's what the header says. Like, are we going to see like the N gauge and the Virtual Boy and all that oh, stuff? Oh, I too? hope not. I hope <laughs> not. I mean, I guess there were a couple of okay games for it, but yeah, but even the controller itself, like, yeah, I don't know. Well, number twenty three is also a piece of shit. The Atari fifty two hundred. Mm, yeah, it's the evil that middle child. gigantic thing with the. <laughs> number pad and the joysticks that broke too easy and it, I don't see how I could even utilize that number pad effectively wasn't it wasn't backwards compatible it really didn't do anything right yeah and like so, I said it's kind of the middle child there was a 2600 which was very successful 7800 could, had better graphics the 7800 may not have been successful but it was by far a better system than the 5200 yeah so I I would put that there. I mean, mm -hmm. that's weird. Unless All right, see so, the 7800 and the 2600 on here. Oh my god, dude. Maybe <laughs> they should have stuck to the top 10 for this. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Number 22 is the 3DO. Uh the full name of it being the 3DO Interactive Multiplayer. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, I can see it at being near the bottom of the list, but Maybe but, on a different list. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, at number 21, we have the Magnavox Odyssey 2, which was the follow-up to the Odyssey. That really, no one had an Odyssey 2. Yeah, but I guess you know. that you know they made some improvements on it, so maybe the specs. Well, you know what the thing is. By the time the Odyssey 2 came out, the the Atari 2600 was out, so it was like that kind of dominated, you know. Yeah, and uh, the Odyssey 2 just faded into existence. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, faded out of existence. Yeah. Say. Uh, number 20 is the Sega Master System, which is an underrated little console that was more powerful than the NES. Didn't get so much support in North America, but no. it was very popular in Europe. Oh, so, yeah. it was. Uh, Europe was like its mainstay. Europe, Europe, and Australia. The Master System actually uh, outsold the NES. Wow, I couldn't imagine uh, anything. In, yeah. 
any not food in North, place. Not in North America, not in North America, and not in Japan, but in, you know, the PAL regions, basically. Maybe they were very popular. Maybe they were more PAL friendly, I guess? I don't know. I think it was the marketing. I, I think Nintendo didn't really push into Europe like they should have. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I have a friend from Australia that, I mean, to her, it's like, you know, the opposite. It's like, she's like, what's the NES? I never even heard of that thing. And <laughs> she had a Sega Master System, you know? So she yeah. grew up on, on Sega the same way we grew up on, on Nintendo. It's just like two completely different environments. Opposites, even. Yes. Yeah. Okay, number 19 is the Neo Geo. Now, that's a good system. Mm ungodly expensive though i mean <laughs> it's it's like a, it's like an arcade supporting yeah, i mean yeah basically yeah i mean for the console itself if you wanted to get the bare bones version of the system you might get it for like six hundred dollars oh my god and that's you know just for the basic system itself and then the games themselves oh. are two, 200 bucks a pop <laughs> So that was definitely the the rich the rich person's choice of a console. But, but uh, uh, if you had one, then we would talk of the town. Also, the only twenty four bit system I've ever seen. Oh, really? It's twenty four bits. You don't see twenty four bit uh, microprocessors too often, but they do exist, and the Neo Geo uses one. Oh huh, yeah, it's kind of you know in between your uh, Super Nintendo and. Uh, Sega CD well, you, 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 know, you, you know, you know, the bits have nothing to do with nothing. No, no, not really. But you know that. I mean, you've watched Clear and Confusion. Yes. Number 18, uh, we're back to Sega for number 18, is the Sega Saturn. Not too many people owned a Saturn. I owned a Saturn. I enjoyed it. It does get a lot of love in the nostalgia sense. It also gets a lot of love for a lot of the games that we didn't get. A lot of the uh, imports from Japan that didn't come out here are uh, some of the best games on the Saturn. Hmm, such as? Uh, Radiant Silver Gun comes to mind. You know, I just noticed something, and I'm going to actually go back a little here. Okay. I just noticed that they, for each one they have a sidebar for uh, m- notable games. Oh, really? And I should have been reading those from the get-go, but... Um, <laughs> So just go for the ones that we've been through already really yeah. quick. From the Magnavox Odyssey, um, every game for it came with it, but they uh, said the notable games were Shooting Gallery, Tennis, Baseball, and Wipeout. Sure. Um, for the Jaguar, Tempest 2000, uh, Aliens vs. Predator, Doom, Iron Soldier, and Power Drive Rally. Mm. Um, kind of interesting that they, you know, Cybermorph wasn't on there. I guess they realized it sucked. Um <laughs> For the 5200, there Montezuma's Revenge, and I gotta admit, the 5200 had one of the best versions of Montezuma's Revenge, but the best version of all time was on the Master System. Just wanted to point that out. But Montezuma's Revenge, Super Breakout, Space Invaders, Zaxxon, and Pitfall 2. Uh, for the 3DO, we have Gex, Star Control 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, which I believe is the only home version of that until the PlayStation came out. Oh, wow. The Road Rash and the original John Madden Football. <laughs> and the Magnavox Odyssey 2 had KC Munchkin, KC Crazy Chase, Quest for the Rings, Freedom Fighters, and Pickaxe Pete. None of these I've heard of. <laughs> Pickaxe Pete. Yeah, the Master System, there was Fantasy Star, Alex Kidd and Miracle World, Wonder Boy and Monster Land, Fantasy Zone, and Space Harrier. All the Master System classics you would expect. Yes. And for the Neo Geo, we have Samurai Showdown, Baseball Stars 2, Magician Lord, Nam 1975, and Windjammers. Hmm. Oddly, no mention of the King of Fighters. Oh, oh yeah, right. Neo Geo, yeah. I mean, come on. And on the Sega Saturn, notable games include Virtual Fighter 2, Panzer Dragoon Saga, Dragon Force, Knights into Dreams, and Burning Ranger. I was waiting to All hear Knights into Dreams games. on there. Oh, well, you know, that's, that's like pretty much the, uh, the game you think of when you think of the Saturn, yeah, you know? That, that game kind of defines the Saturn to me. In a lot of ways, yeah. And number 17, uh, finally getting its due, the Atari 7800. There we go. The most uh, powerful of those uh, that g- uh, generation of uh, Atari well, systems. Tec- well, technically, it's considered same generation as the NES. Well, um, maybe that's not quite what I meant. I meant like 
Six yeah. hundred. No, I know you mean the, the numbered ones. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, notable notable games including Ball Blazer, Food Fight, Food Fight, Zevius, Joust, and Pole Position Two. All good games. Mm-hmm. Actually, I don't think I've played Ball Blazer, but the rest of those I have played. Mm. The Atari seventy eight hundred was an underrated little console. Yeah, I actually have like you know those little uh, those little really better than the Saturn though. That's what I want to know. <laughs> those kind of little arcade things that you can like the two prongs you can plug in your TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I got one of those for my birthday from a friend of a 7800 games, and the one I played most was Food Fight. Food Fight is fun. I did a video of that uh, with Julie, and yeah. we had a lot of fun doing that. Number 16, and it pains me to see this one so low on the list, is the Nintendo GameCube. Oh, number 16. It should be a, a 16, little that, higher. It should be a lot higher. It should be top 10, definitely. <laughs> I mean, come on. Well, I love the GameCube. You know that I'm a huge fan of the GameCube. You're a collector, of course. Definitely. The notable games that they pick out, and it's a good it's a good mix, although there's so many more you could pick. Of course. But if you only if you had to pick five games, I suppose these do. Uh, Metroid Prime, yeah. Resident Evil 4, The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, of course. Eternal Darkness, and Super Smash Bros. Melee. I'm glad Eternal Darkness is on there. I would have maybe sandwiched Pikmin in there somewhere, but other than mm. that, that's a really good mix of, you know, mm-hmm. games for the GameCube. A little bit of I agree with it being on the list, I just don't think it should be number 16. I wonder how IGN gets, like, figures out what order these are put in. Is this just the staff going, oh, I, I, You know what, this? I imagine them, I imagine them all sitting around a table arguing with each other. Uh, so there's no, like, yeah. no polls or anything like that? Well, these are these are done by the st- maybe maybe everybody puts like their top ten or something, and then they make like a point system. But I I don't know. I don't know who's putting the jaguar in there. You know, <laughs> some joker. Yeah, the three do. Come on now. Yeah. Number fifteen is the PlayStation Three. Hmm. That seems about right for a placement for PS Three. Um, yeah. Notable games: Uncharted, Drake's Fortune, Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots, Killzone 2, Little Big Planet, and Flower. I don't um, know why Metal Gear Solid 4 is on that list, but I don't. I don't know why you would pick Uncharted 1 and not Uncharted 2 either. Maybe because the first one kind of it it reinvigorated the PS3, kind of brought it back from yeah, but the second one was death. awesome. That's like the Super NES list from last episode where they, they had picked uh, Donkey Kong Country 1 but not Donkey Kong Country 2. Yeah, 2 is definitely superior. Even superior so, yeah. to the third, but anyway. I Yeah. Um, and number 14, and this is, okay, is this really better than the PS3? The Intellivision. Uh, maybe you have to be placed in that time. To truly it, appreciate it. Yeah, but I mean, I, I put the Intellivision almost on the same plane as the Atari 5200 and had the number pad. I mean, it did, you know, the joystick, it didn't even have a joystick. It had like a fucking disc thing. That like a didn't dial. Even work. It didn't even work properly. The, the cartridges were hard to manage in putting in the system. The controllers were hardwired. I mean, it, mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, notable games include Astro Smash, Snafu, Tron, Deadly Discs, Utopia, and Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Tell you what a Snafu was putting it this uh, high on the list. Oh, oh snap! Yeah. Number thirteen, and here's an underrated little gem: uh, the Turbo Graphic sixteen. Uh, Don't get to talk about that one too much. This one, uh, I whenever people go on about old video game systems. I'd never hear anybody ever talk about the TurboGrafx-16. It doesn't get love or hate. It was really early to the party. I mean, it it barely had time to shine before the Sega Genesis really eclipsed it. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Notable games include Bonk's Adventure, Military Madness, Splatterhouse, Blazing Lasers, and Legendary Axe. Mm Mm-hmm. I I do really like Bonk's Adventure. I agree with all of those except for uh, Military Madness. I mean, that was a great turn-based strategy game, but when you think of notable TurboGrafx-16 games, <laughs> um, you think of a lot more shmups than just blazing lasers. That was the system to play shoot 'em ups on. For real, I, n- I never got the chance oh, yeah. to play that many. That was the big, yeah. Games. That was the big deal about it. You know, that was the big. Also, I mean, you know, Castlevania Rondo of Blood. Hello. Oh, yeah. You know. 
I, maybe I, I they don't, don't count it. Maybe they don't count it because it was for the CD add-on. I don't know. Number twelve uh, is the ColecoVision. Hmm. They're, they're I mean, going with the, a lot of these oldies, eh? Uh, out of those three systems, the ColecoVision, the Intellivision, and the Atari Fifty Two Hundred, which are all sort of almost the same thing, I would agree the ColecoVision was the best one. Yeah, I'd put Col- if I had to eliminate two of them, keep ColecoVision on here. Yeah. Make yeah. room for some better consoles. Exactly. Um, notable games include Donkey Kong, Turbo, Mousetrap, Mr. Do, and Zaxxon. Interesting things, at the time, all of the home ports of Donkey Kong were made by Coleco. To every system? Wow. Yeah, up until, up until the NES, because um, Nintendo sold like exclusive rights to home console versions of Donkey Kong to Coleco. So the versions for um, Atari and uh, Intellivision were actually made by Coleco. <laughs> which is also kind of why the ColecoVision version of Donkey Kong was superior to them. They made the other ones bad on purpose. Oh, that is some clever secret marketing. Yeah. Nintendo learned their lesson from that. <laughs> they never did that again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, number 11 is the original Xbox. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know about that. I can't number, really think number of... Number 11. Yeah. Maybe number, maybe number 24... You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> maybe put a little... Bump the Jaguar um, off of there. I think, yeah, that would be a good move. Jeez. You know, one thing I'm noticing is there's no handhelds on here. I guess they didn't include handhelds. I guess they're going just top 25 home consoles, yeah. Yeah, they're not counting the handhelds at all. Um, notable games, Halo Combat Evolved, Jade Empire, Ninja Gaiden Black, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, and Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Sounds about right. Yeah, but weren't uh, many of those games also on PlayStation 2? Well, well, not Halo, and certainly not Knights of the Old Republic. No, but and, like... And um, not, uh, not Ninja Gaiden either, so I don't oh, know about oh, Jade Empire. Oh, Ninja Gaiden didn't make it to PlayStation? I thought it was on there. No, N- Ninja Gaiden's always been an Xbox series, up until like recently. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know. I never really played the new ones, so I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, Ninja Gaiden first appeared on... Well, the, you know, the reboot of it first appeared on Xbox, original Xbox. All right, well, yeah, that list of like, games sounds yeah. pretty legit. Yeah, it's about what you'd expect. Uh, so we're moving into the top ten here. Number mm. ten is the Wii. Mm. Nice to see it on here. Um, yeah. Notable games, super, notable games, Super Mario Galaxy, yes. Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, Wii Sports, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. Hmm. Sounds about right. I'd say so. You know, of uh, the, the the most well, I, I don't want to say most well-made games for the system, but the most popular, maybe? the well-known ones. Yeah. Because Twilight Princess wasn't exactly made the greatest for the Wii, but it's it was a pretty better good game. on GameCube because it was a GameCube game. Yeah. You know. But, you know, I mean, yeah, if you're going to put... I mean, there's only one Zelda game on the Wii so far, unless you count Link's uh, fucking crossbow training. (laughs) Yeah. Number nine, a little bit of an odd placement on the list for this one, the Nintendo 64. Number nine, oh. Above the Wii, even. Yeah. um, That's that's what I find questionable. and, And yet... When the 64 was released, it did far. It was far inferior to the PlayStation. While the Wii remained number one for a long time, and yes. still is number one on some weeks. So, um, notable games: The Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time, Super Mario 64, Wave Race 64, Banjo Kazooie, and GoldenEye. Mm-hmm. I definitely question the inclusion of Wave Race 64. Fine yeah. game. Fine game. But uh, how about some of the many, many, many other classics on the system? I mean, what about Mario Kart? Yeah, Mario Kart 64, but uh, maybe... Star Fox? Uh, yeah, Star Fox be another 64. One. I mean, like... So many games, so many games. Mm-hmm. Wave Race is a weird one to pick. Uh, number eight would be the Dreamcast. Uh, I'm glad to see it on air. This is the system that everybody but Joey loves. Really, he does not like the Dreamcast. He had two of them die on him, so I can understand he's a little bitter. <laughs> yeah, poor guy. Yeah. I like the Dreamcast. I had a lot of fun with it. Me Notable too. games. Uh, the thing about it is, though, and, and, and Joey brings up this point a lot, and he is correct, is that just about every game on the Dreamcast that's worth playing is now available on other systems. 
But to me, that just shows the longevity of those games, that they were all ported to other systems. Mm -hmm. And, for example, uh, the, the five notable games I'm about to mention, only one of them was never ported elsewhere, uh, and that's the first one, Soul Calibur. Uh, also, Sonic Adventure, Crazy Taxi, Resident Evil Code Veronica, and Shenmue. Oh, Shenmue. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah remember Shenmue did make it to PlayStation 2. A lot of things, yeah. a lot of uh, people forget that. And it did have, like, the essential version of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I would have probably included that instead of Resident Evil Code Veronica, but... Oh, well. Can't win them all. I mm -hmm. mean, the reason most people bought the system, though, was for Soul Calibur. Really? I got it for Sonic Adventure, but... Well, that was you know, back I, you know Sonic Adventure was fun, but... Soul Calibur was the game that really showed off what the system could do, and it was never on any other system. So, mm -hmm. and I always wonder why they, you know, like why that can't make it to like PSN or Xbox Live. Yeah, just or throw it as an extra on in one of the new Soul Calibur games, even. Yeah, what if it came with Soul Calibur Five? If you got like the original one as a as a, a bonus, that or would be cool. Right? Soul Calibur HD, you know, or something. Because like I'm that. I'm definitely looking forward to Five. So yeah. Number seven, and lots of love for this one from me, the original PlayStation. Mm, I oh, never, I I never the owned the original. I take umbrage with their five picks here. Mm, let's see. Uh, we have Metal Gear Solid, Gran <laughs> Turismo, mm. Final Fantasy VII, Wipeout, and Resident Evil. All right, now, i got to say, I agree with Final Fantasy VII. Of course. I agree with Resident Evil. Yes. And even though I'm not a fan of the game, I do agree with Gran Turismo. And even though I fucking hate Metal Gear Solid, I can see why they chose it. <laughs> yes. Fucking Wipeout, though? Not Castlevania Symphony of the Night? Oh, yeah. Why wouldn't that be on this list of I mean, all games? That's the reason I bought the PlayStation. Yeah, Wipeout, though... I, I Weird, don't, I don't right? Know, what kind of, like, is it just basic racer kind of thing? Wipeout is like, uh, it's kind of, if you ever played Extreme G? Yeah. It sounded like that. A very fast, futuristic kind of, it's a fun game, no no doubt. It's just, you know, because it's like a pure arcade racing kind of thing. Just really fast and, you know, like F-Zero X, you know? Maybe they wanted to include a sports game on the list. And this is Gran that would kind of be like sports. They have Gran Turismo on there. Whoa, right. Two racing games. Yeah. All right, and number six, and I love this system, the Xbox 360. Hmm. I take umbrage with their choices of notable games, but... <laughs> Again. Halo 3, Gears of War, Forza Motorsport 2, Dead Rising, and Crackdown. Um... Weird, right? Um, okay. I don't know. I'm not... I haven't played any 360 games, so I'm kind of... I just... I, you know, I, I don't know. It, it seems weird to me. Like, Red Dead Redemption, Mass Effect... Oh, Mass Effect. That gets nothing but praise from people. I mean, you know, maybe they were trying to pick games that were only on that system, but I'm pretty sure Dead Rising was on PS3, so... Yes, actually, when, and the sequel... So I, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of weird. But, uh, but number I, I, five. Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. No, go ahead. Say what you were going to say. Oh, no. Just I can see why it would be so high on the list. I mean, it's insanely popular here. Oh, of course. And it's a great, great system. It's just that Forza Motorsport 2. <laughs> hey, you never know. Maybe it's got a motorsport what is that somewhere. Come on, though. I mean... <laughs> what about Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 or I I don't know. All right, I'm going to move on here. Okay. I'm just getting pissed off. Number 5, Sega Genesis. Now we're getting into the classics here. Yeah. Um notable games Sonic the Hedgehog, Castle of Illu Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse, Echo the Dolphin, Fantasy Star 4 and Golden Axe. Hmm. What? Echo the Dolphin? <laughs> I played Castle all of, of Illusion. I played all of these except Fantasy Star. Fantasy Star 4 is also the best one. But Echo the Dolphin, boring. Sucked. Oh. I gotta, it, is a, it is a notable game, though. It was a popular game. I don't understand yeah. Castle of Illusion being there. Yeah, that and was also kind of boring. What about, you know, I would have put, like, maybe Streets of Rage there or something like that. Of course, that. classic beat-em-up action. That's a, Streets yeah, of Rage. Exactly. 
Street Fighter maybe, 2, maybe. Or, yeah, well, then again, you, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog, you, I would have put Sonic 3, but, you know. Well, yeah, there's um, that debate. But, I mean, another, an, I mean, what about, like, Shining Force? You know, there's a lot of weird shit that they're... All right, but moving on, number... Oh, my God, are you kidding me? <laughs> this is number four. Oh my, God. Hold on, i got to beat myself with the microphone. Be prepared, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be great! The Super NES is number four. Only number four? For real? What the fuck? All right, I, I'm without clicking forward because I, I I put it in number one, no doubt in my mind there. What could yeah. possibly be above? There's three systems that are above it. I'm not looking ahead, but I'm just trying to think of what they've left out. And I guess the PlayStation Two is in there. NES. The NES, and what would be the third one that would be in there? <coughs> Um, let's see, the, uh, Neo Geo Pocket. They're not including handhelds, though. Ah. They haven't had a single handheld yet, and you would have seen them by now, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to think, I mean, would it be, maybe the Atari 2600. <gasps> got it. CI. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, it's got to be the original Atari, because that, you know. Oh, well, yeah. Super NES is number one. This list auto-fails for not having Super NES at number one. I agree. Um, notable games, Super Metroid, The Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, Donkey Kong Country, Final Fantasy VI, and Chrono Trigger. That is a fantastic list. It's a good list. It's three RPGs and a platformer and then Super Metroid. I mean, it could have had a little more variety. Yeah, it could have, but I really like all those games. But the thing is, it is tough to pick just five Super NES games. Yeah, because there's very so much win winning games very, on that list. Very winning Yes, exactly. I'm by winning. All right, let's see what beat the Super <laughs> NES. Uh, number three is PlayStation 2. I called that one. It's in a great, amazing system. One of the best of all time. Definitely belongs in the top five, but is not better than the Super NES. Hello. Hey, again. It happens. Jesse's internet disconnected. No big deal. We'll just plow through. Yes, let's just continue Kinda like on. I plowed your mom. Mm. Oh, she's a nice lady. I, I agree. She <laughs> always bakes cookies after we fuck. <laughs> uh, so we were at uh, number three on the list, which is the PlayStation 2, mm -hmm. which I think is a great, amazing system and one of the best of all time. I don't think it's better than the Super NES, though. No, I saw Harold Super NES up there, definitely. Yeah. Uh, they pick notable games, Grand Theft Auto 3, Guitar Hero, Shadow of the Colossus, God of War, and Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, which is what you'd expect. Yeah, I, again, you know, another good collection. I mean... I could know. pick about a million things that are missing, but, you know, when you only have five slots... And you want to keep it varied, well, at least try to. i got to give them a lot of credit for including Shadow of the Colossus. Yes. They, they could have also picked Eco. Shadow of the Colossus... I mean, Eco was a great, amazing game, but Shadow of the Colossus was the better one. So, so they say. Yeah. Well, they're coming to PS3 soon. I'm excited, yes. Number two, and I take umbrage with this, it's certainly an important console, but it's the Atari 2600. Wow, number two. I mean, okay, the title, the title of this list is... Top 25 video game consoles of all time. They might as well have called it most important video game consoles of all time. I haven't looked uh, at number one. Clearly, it's the NES. I would agree the, that those you know, NES and then 2600 are, are the most important consoles of all time, but are they the best? Um, I don't I, no. I mean, they had the 5200 on here. Yeah, and well, they also had the Jaguar. They had and the 3DO. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, here we, here's our, the games that they pick for notable games. Pac-Man, E.T., Space Invaders, Pitfall, and Atlantis. And say what you will about Atari, Pac-Man, and E.T., they were at least notable. Hello? Yeah, I'm, uh, in, in terms of just their importance. But yeah. again, this isn't... Well, those were also the most important consoles. This yeah, is yeah. the best. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, I was right. Number one's the NES. Uh, great system. Not number one in my book. They they did do a good job picking five notable games. We have Super Mario Brothers, Metroid, The Legend of Zelda, Castlevania, and Mega Man Two. Yeah, makes sense in my book. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would have, I wouldn't have picked Mega Man Two. I would have picked a different one, like you know, four. But yeah, all four, right, four. they're picking. Yeah, but they are. <laughs> I, yeah, they are picking notable games. So I, I didn't yes. like this list. I'm gonna give it a low rating. Out of twenty five, I'm gonna give it a three. I, I think that the order was all fucked up. They were, they should have wow. included, they should have included handhelds. They, they should not have included the Jaguar, the 3DO, the 5200, or half the shit that's on here. Mm -hmm. Or the Odyssey 2. I mean, if you're going to pick the Odyssey 2, you might as well put the fair... <laughs> um, you know what? If, if we're picking important consoles and not the best, why not include the Fairchild Channel F, then? The first console to use cartridges. Yeah, that's we're, the one I was trying to get at. Was is your, the is your, F, is, not the uh, Odyssey, that's right. Yeah, uh, Jesse, is your internet okay over there? We're getting a little bit of a delay here. I'm uh, having a feeling that we're going to get disconnected. Um, um, probably, because, again, I don't know what it is, but all of a sudden my power goes all the way down, but now it's coming back up. Okay, that's good. Um, so what would you give? I give it a 3 out of 25. What do you give it? I would give... Uh, it, it was pretty terrible list, so I won't even go past 10. I'll say 7, because I did like some of the games that they picked for... Uh, Still a low school. system. Still a low school. Yeah, but, you know, that was just a sidebar. That's not the actual list, you know? Well, if you have to go by the actual list and nothing else, uh, yeah. I, I drop it even further to 5. Okay, so 5 from Jesse, a 3 from me. And now we're going to move on to our second list, and this is also a um, top 25 list. Only mm -hmm. this one is from yugo.com, uh, com, and this is, and you're going to like this, Jesse. This mm. is the top 25 video game soundtracks. <gasps> oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, before <laughs> we even start it, uh, any notable things that you expect to be on here? Well, in recent years, a lot of the soundtrack has gone towards like a like a classical, you know, orchestral Absolutely, kind of yeah, theme yeah. to it, with grandiose, epic, you know, soundtracks. Like as much as you know, I pain to say it, even the Halo series, you know, oh, yeah, is well yeah, known yeah, for that, its soundtrack. That is true. That is true. But also, a lot of the expected, you know, classic. Uh, themes that you recognize from individual series, you know, like Mega Man, Castlevania, Mario, Zelda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all the uh, all all the main franchises. Give me two and games, it, two two specific games you expect to see on this. Um, uh, probably um, Halo, maybe some Halo, Halo some Halo. Halo game, and and God, I'm crossing my fingers. Hopefully. Uh, Final Fantasy VI. I would expect two games that I would expect to see on here would definitely be Final Fantasy VI, and I would also expect to see a Castlevania game on here. Oh yeah, well, uh, it, it's it's just which Castlevania game do you pick? You know, I I would hope that Symphony of the Night would make it. I, I I actually I mean I think the best soundtrack was in the new game, Lords of Shadow, but I would think that Symphony of the Night would have a place on here. But let's get to it. Um, number 25, we have yeah. Lumines. Lumines for PlayStation Portable. And that was, you know... Oh, that uh, puzzle game. Well, it's a mixture of, like, a puzzle game and a rhythm game, so it's definitely known for its music. Yeah. it's. Uh, I never actually played it, but, you know, I've seen it in the store. I've seen people, other people play it, but never got a chance to hear the soundtrack, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I haven't, like, really heard too much from it. So, But I, I would say that that sounds like something that would belong on here. Um, next up, we have Silent Hill 2. Mm, probably, you know, for a very atmospheric soundtrack. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, soundtrack. creating that creepy whole vibe and everything. Maybe, uh, I don't know. I've, I've only ever really seen the first Silent Hill 
I'm so, not too um, familiar with the series. So, so I assume maybe it would be something like a very list, you know, very few sounds, but the, the soundtrack comes in just when you need it, you know? Probably, yeah, like, kind of like what Resident Evil does, but, um, yeah. you know, maybe a little better. Um, next up we have Portal. Portal seems to show up on these sorts of lists a lot. Portal, the first one? The first I Portal, don't yeah. That much, I don't recall that much music in the game, Well, there was really. the th- I think they're mostly referring to the theme song. Still Alive? Yeah, I think they're referring to that mostly. Well, it, it is still pretty low on the list, but it was a pretty quirky song. Yeah. Um, next up we have Jade Empire... Which, uh, I haven't played that one. As a matter of fact, out of all the Bioware RPGs they could include, that's sort of an interesting choice, not something like Mass Effect or Dragon Age, but Jade Empire. Hmm, I, I've never seen it. Well, if you've, uh, if you've probably, played probably any... Seen it in passing. If you've played any of the Bioware RPGs, you really know what to expect. Okay, once again, dude, we're getting like a horrible, horrible delay. I don't know what you're doing. Are you downloading something? Something's going on over there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Did, did, did you get any of what I said? No. Damn. All right, well, let's just move on. <laughs> okay. Uh, next up, this game, I haven't even heard of this one, but it's maybe you have. It's called Advent Rising. No, but I thought you were going to say, like, Advent Children or well, something. Well, that's, that's not a video <laughs> game. No, but Advent Rising, it doesn't ring a bell. What system? Uh, you know, it doesn't even say what system it's on, but I can find out in a, in a GIF here. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm going to do. Advent Rising. Advent Rising. Huh. Is, uh, well, it's taken a while here. It's on the original Xbox, and also it was on Windows. Oh. That's why. Uh, we haven't, neither of us had original Xbox. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. And really much for, well, probably by the time this came out, it wasn't into PC gaming. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Beyond Good and Evil. I haven't played this one. Well, I have, and I can tell you that it has a great soundtrack, great gameplay, great story, and... Hardly anybody's ever even played it before. Very underrated. You know, that, that's a Ubisoft game, so you would think that it would have a little bit of clout. Well, yeah, but uh, they've recently put it on PSN in the HD format, and it's been picking up some steam, and they're in that's talks good. of revitalizing the series, so I'm very excited. Well, they keep delaying the second game. Yeah, but... They're um, saying it's not e- not even going to appear on the current consoles. No, but hopefully uh, maybe this uh, HD mix of the game will kind of you know spark some interest in the game yet again. But uh, as for the soundtrack, I found it very, again, like I said, atmospheric. Like when you're doing an action scene, it really it really pumps up with like an orchestral theme. And then when you're maybe solving a puzzle, it becomes a very like minimalist and docile. It's it's great. It's great. So it's got like a range of styles. Okay. Uh, now this next one, I do I take umbrage with this. Uh, they chose Guitar Hero. Now, first off, it yeah, there's <laughs> great music in Guitar Hero, obviously, but it's not really a video game soundtrack. It's a collection of the already existing songs. And secondly, if you're going to pick any Guitar Hero game, you would not pick the first one where it was covers of the songs done by the development team and not the actual tracks. Yeah, because some of those cover songs were just pretty piss poor cover songs. I mean, some of them some of them were pretty close. I'll give them credit, but some of them were very questionable. And also, it kind of feels like cheating if you pick Guitar Hero as. Uh, yeah, that that that's my whole point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, well, moving on. Uh, yeah. Next one is uh, these are not numbered. Uh, I mean, they are, but they're not giving me numbers. But okay, let's see. This is. Uh, that was 20, so that's 19. Oh, so number 18 would be Mass Effect. Got to agree with this mm-hmm. one. If, it, if it's anything like the other epic shooters, 
that you see on you know on PS3 or 360, then it probably has a good soundtrack. I haven't actually typical, played any aspects. Uh, science fiction space opera type of music, you know. Yeah, so so it's not yeah. even. Does it like have electronic sounds mixed in with an orchestra? No, not really. Not not really. I mean, it's it's uh, it's actually very uh, ambient. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that that would work. Uh, next up, we have God of War. Say what you will about the game; it did have a good soundtrack. Indeed, again, you know, with the um, it, it's it's a very epic soundtrack, and and mm-hmm. I'm not just using that word epic like everybody else throws it around. It's actually a very, you know, it's an epic tale, so it needs a very <laughs> grandiose music. Yeah, and in, and that's the important thing about a video game soundtrack is not only having uh, music that's good, but having music that fits the action. <laughs> uh, number 16 we have uh, I, I I hate this game Earthworm Jim <laughs> Real? Eh, well, it, it, it does fit the game style I will say that yeah but the game's crap oh, I, I, I enjoyed the game it wasn't yeah. perfect beyond far from perfect but the, I find the soundtrack fits the game and as for the soundtrack itself it's okay I mean it's it's kind of Goofy. And well, this crazy. list has been very questionable so far, but it's about to turn the corner. I'm looking at the next few, and it's getting better. <laughs> um, at number 15, we have Bioshock. Oh, well, there you go. I mean, um, Bioshock, I mean, they did use some licensed music, like uh, uh, Billie Holiday and, and Django Reinhardt, but they also had original music, and it all fit the atmosphere perfectly. And also the time period that the Rapture was created in, so you do expect to hear a lot of that, you know, like old timey jazz stuff. And let me tell you, there's something really creepy. I know you haven't played much of Bioshock, mm, yeah. But there's something really creepy about. I mean, it, it it is basically a horror game, and there's something very creepy about wandering through these blood soaked corridors and you know giant robot guys and creepy little girls and um, ambient sounds and chanting and mm. and then there's like an old like Victrola style record player and it's you know all of a sudden this big firefight breaks out with big daddies and splicers and and robot helicopter things and and, and there's like all this chaos going on and almost to be, you know, to not go with the action, there's like this old Victrola playing like, how much is that doggy in the window? <laughs> it's creepy. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it really works to, to sort of be dissonant and crazy. I, I really do agree that Bioshock had one of the best soundtracks out there. Yeah, if you could pull off doing like a polar opposite feel of soundtrack to, to, to the video content... It comes out yeah. perfectly, but yeah. if you don't it's not do a, it right, an easy thing. Mm-hmm. Then it's just dippy, you know. <laughs> like like imagine playing wow. Bioshock to the tune of. <laughs> well, you know there there is a part that that is kind of like an insane carnival type of thing. So there's there is one part in the first Bioshock that that would have fit. Oh, well, there goes my theory. Anyway. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> uh, number fourteen is Jet Set Radio Future. And oh, that's angry. that's a series that's definitely a series known for its music, so that mm-hmm. definitely fits on here, I think. Yeah, not not uh, particularly my favorite kind of soundtrack, just the music. No, style. yeah, I, I, but, yeah, yeah. But, I, not but, my style of music either. I agree with. But the you. style of game with the music does kind of work, you know. Exactly. The, the, exactly. the culture, whatnot. Uh, yeah, I agree fully. Number thirteen is Chrono Trigger. Ah, oh, yeah. fantastic! Ah, a, what can be? What that's can be an said excellent about soundtrack. Now you know it's interesting. I mean, we could talk about Chrono Trigger all day, and we really shouldn't because we have other things to talk about. Indeed. But not counting Earthworm Jim, and I really don't count it. This is the oldest game on here so far. Wow! And that was what 1995. <laughs> I think 96, but you know what? 96. Uh, I. Th- you know what? I'm not sure. It was either late 95 or early 90s. I'm looking it up now. Oh, okay. Because um, it, it's around there, you know? Yeah. Let's see. In America, it came out March 1995, so you were right. All right. Yeah. Hey, you see, you were right. 96 was... No. Okay, that was wrong. I was wrong. Okay, no but moving on. Um, after that, we have Final Fantasy VII. 
Huh, okay. Um... I gotta admit, there are times when I'll just walk around and I hear the theme, uh, the uh, the overworld song in my head, you know? <laughs> you know, that, that just gets in my head. One Winged Angel, I mean, it did have a great soundtrack. It did have a pretty good soundtrack. It's just, I really did not like the Overworld song, actually. Really? I love the Overworld song. I thought it was, it fit the, the mood perfectly. It felt like an adventure. I mean, I, I, what's, I much, what's not to like about the Overworld? The Overworld theme's fucking great! You're out of your mind! I much preferred the theme when you were riding around in the uh, airship. Well, that was a good one, too, but I mean... Oh, wow. Oh, well. All right, well, moving on to number 11, we have Parappa the Rapper. <laughs> and I know this is not really our style of music, but you got to admit, it was a very fun game. Crack, crack, crack the egg and tooth the bowl. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love their blurb. They have, like, big paragraphs for all of them. Oh. But for Parappa the Rapper, they only have this. It says, not even Chop Chop Master Onion could teach you to be this fresh. <laughs> yes. Kick punch, it's all you know, one mind. thing I still remember yeah, some of those songs. Of course, of course. You know, one thing is it never really got a true sequel. I thought it had one on PS2. Wasn't that like but wasn't that like a completely different game called Unjammer Lammy or something? I think that was on PlayStation One, but there was a Parappa So wait, was there a two. was there a Parappa two? Yes. Okay, you know what? I've never even seen it. Oh you're right, there was a Parappa two. I never got yeah. to play it, but I I've never even. Its I'm existence. looking at. I'm looking at the box for the first time ever. I've never even seen it. I didn't oh, know wow. it had a sequel. Wow, that's cool. I did not know that. I'll have to look into that. Mm-hmm. Um, imagine, imagine doing that today, like where you can actually use a microphone. Oh my God! Well, hey, you never know. Maybe they'll. That would be cool. Maybe they'll bring it back. <laughs> All right, we're in the top ten now. Number ten is Res for PlayStation Two. Um, what's that? What's that's that, that game? That's that. That's that rhythm game. That's also like a like a shoot 'em up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, it's all it's all techno music, yeah. but it but because it's like a futuristic shooting rhythm thing, it totally fits. It totally works. Yeah, right. and everything everything in the game follows the beat of the music. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. Maybe I should look into Res. I do like little, rhythm games. Little known, little known fact: there was a, a, a there was a, a, a what do you call it? A peripheral mm-hmm. for PS2 for use with Res. That was actually uh, it, well, let's just say it was called the Trans Vibrator, <laughs> and it's exactly what you think it is. Wait, and, yep. Yeah. <laughs> And the whole you you get your girlfriend to you know put the trans vibrator where it belongs, and you play the game, and the better you do, the better she feels. <laughs> oh man, that's fantastic! I mean, that's just yeah, I know, right? Uh, I bet you they so, they sold a surprising amount of those. I wouldn't be surprised if they did, but then again, you know, you'd have to have the game there. Whereas, why not just get a regular vibrator and do whatever you want? I, I guess it's to get, you know, somebody to, uh, you like know, play somebody's girlfriend couple, to play video games, couple, so now you can yeah, join. A couple, a couple to play together. I don't know. <laughs> um, number number nine here, and I don't like the game, but I got, you know, I will agree with the soundtrack being on here, is Metal Gear Solid. Mm-hmm. Another very fitting soundtrack. Very, yes. It's very intense, very high intensity Oh, absolutely. That was the, the one thing about the game that I did like. Um, at number... Uh, I hate that these are not numbered. Number seven, and this is... You You picked this one out, Halo. Um, there. So you were correct. I, and it's a surprisingly high. All right, well... It does it, have... It did have a good theme. Yeah. And yes. very, very well orchestrated. I actually do kind of like the soundtrack, but... Uh, you know, the game's a different story. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> here's a game that I didn't expect to see on this list, but I'm actually rather pleased that it did make it, uh, because uh, this is a game that, you, that people talk about all the time, but you don't really hear them talk about the music very much, which is a shame, and I'm talking about Kingdom Hearts. Oh, yeah, I guess so, eh? You never really hear people talk about the music, but it does have really good music. 
Yeah, they you know they kind of take the Disney themes to the Disney theme worlds and they kind of spin them, make yeah. them more whimsical. And even when you get far into the game, the very dark areas are yes, yes, it gets pretty crazy and serious. Like one in the memorable area, the the Nightmare Before Christmas part, you had that great Danny Elfman score to it. Yeah, and you know it was instantly recognizable too. You didn't have to go. Wait, yeah. a minute, is that is that you knew yeah. what it was? Yeah. Uh, number six, and this is one that I knew would be on the list, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Hey, there you go. You called it. And, I mean, yeah, they, they, they talk about it. I mean, jazz, metal, rock, techno, classical, it's all there. Mm-hmm. A little bit every of everything. Style, a little every style is touched upon. The one thing that I'd like to forget is that I Am the Wind. What's that? I'm the theme the song, yeah, the I Am oh, the Wind. Was the, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they actually took that out of the PSP version and put a different song there, which is a big improvement. Yeah, because that's the version I'm playing for now, actually, is the uh, unlockable Symphony of the Good, Night. good, good. Uh, so we're in the top five now. All right. Number five, Katamari Damacy. Oh, when we, but back when we were talking about which soundtracks we hope to see on here, I was going to cite that as one of the ones I was hoping for. Well, why why didn't you? I don't know. We were just run, running through I, I just wanted you to name a couple of games, and you went into this whole huge preamble. I tend to do that. Just just say what's on your mind next time. Yeah, all right. But uh, yes. Number four. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Hmm. Interesting choice. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm playing through the 3D version right now, and they didn't really do a whole lot with the the um, changing the music, but I guess it kind of stands yeah. on its own. Personally, if you're going to pick one Zelda game to have the soundtrack, I think it's got to be Wind Waker. I agree with you. I mean, the themes in Wind Waker are, are amazing, so it's kind of a weird choice. Um, here's another one that I think... Um, this is number three. It's kind of a cheat. Mm-hmm. Kind of like Guitar Hero is a cheat. And this one it would be Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Oh, uh, the 80s soundtracks. Yeah, and that's really all it is. It's, it's a bunch of 80s songs. I, 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 like, I, it's a cheat. Yeah, because it's just like, well, it, it's almost like a literal soundtrack. Like, you can go out and buy the soundtrack to Vice City. Well, you can. It's you a, can. Yeah, it's just a series of 80s songs. But it's like, you know, I mean, it, it's like a greatest hits of the 80s. It doesn't really uh, make you, like, when you hear these songs, you don't think of Grand Theft Auto Vice City. No, I just think of, you know, crazy hair and, you know, exactly. bad music yeah. videos. <laughs> oh, wow. Number two is, what is going on with this? Super Mario World is number two. Mm, I don't know why it's that high on the list. I got to put my veto power on that. Yes, please do. <laughs> if you if you're gonna pick any Mario game, Galaxy Two, Galaxy, well, just either the... one or yeah, either Galaxy game would be a, a fine choice. But if you're gonna pick a classic one, why not Yoshi's Island? Actually, I mean, actually, yeah, I do like the soundtrack to Yoshi's Island. I remember a lot of them. But I mean, game. or 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 Super Mario RPG. E- even even that, why would they pick World? I mean. Get it? Yeah, it's the like, soundtrack is good, but yeah. it's, it's by no means. I'm gonna two. I'm gonna use my veto power to remove that from the list, and we'll put Final Fantasy VI in its place. Oh, you're not saying Final Fantasy VI isn't even on this list, are you? It's not because there's only one more thing on this list, yes. and it is drum roll, <laughs> Shadow of the Colossus. Oh. <laughs> I yeah I know you haven't played it. Exactly. And it keeps coming up on lists. I know. Um, it has an amazing soundtrack. It really does. Trust me, folks. When it comes out on PS3, I'm playing the hell out it's of it. An amazing sweeping orchestral. But the craziest thing is, there's almost no music in the game. Really? It's it when you're riding across the plains. There's nothing, just ambient sounds. I was going to ask about that. What is the music they play between boss fights? Nothing. O- nothing. Only p- there's only music during the boss scenes and the cutscenes. Now, I take it the boss fights 
take longer than getting. Oh yeah, because they're all they're yeah they're all these huge huge guys that you got to climb up and find the weak point. I mean, they're, that's the whole game is boss fights. <laughs> Yeah, an interesting concept, and I'll, okay. I'll, I'll take your word for it that it's got a great soundtrack. Yeah, I, I, and I would put it like high up on the list. I don't know about number one, but I would put it high up on the list. I'm going to be a little kinder to this one than I was to the last one. Mm-hmm. I mean, there there are three things that I would just strike right off, and that would be Super Mario World, yeah. Vice City, and Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero, yeah. But then what's left is, is a good mix. Yeah. I'm going to give it a 12 out of 25. Hmm. I'm going to be a little nicer and actually give it a 17. I thought it was great. 17, okay. Now, the rest of the list that we have here uh, are all top 10 lists, but we're halfway done because that was 50 right there. All now, right. we're going to move to movies now, and this is from a website called Listverse, which hmm. I had never heard of, but I came across it, and we have the top 10 most controversial movies of all time. I like the sound of this. Yeah. Like now, what do you what do you th- movie. what do you think of when you think of a controversial movie? I've seen the list, so uh, I don't know, like exploitation and maybe you know grisly horror movie or okay. maybe something with too much sexual content. Okay. Any particular names that you think of when you think of a movie that caused a lot of controversy? Well, one that I've actually seen that I think caused a lot of controversy was Clockwork Orange. Yeah, that did cause a lot of con it, during its time. It was also a brilliant movie, despite what Joey oh. says. Oh yes, of course. I, I I own it, but just the just the sheer amount of ultra violence in it. And you know what? By today's standards, it's not even that violent. No, but when you think back to when it was made, you know, like early well, 70s. Well, it came I, out in uh, 1971, so. Yeah, early 70s. You wouldn't you wouldn't expect that kind of thing. All right, uh, number ten. On our top ten most controversial movies, we have Last Tango in Paris, which uh, it was it was rated X. That came out in 1972, and I've never seen the movie, but immediately when I hear the name Last Tango in Paris, I know why it's controversial, because I know there's an anal sex scene in it. Oh my god, really? And Well, you well, said it's yeah. rated X. It yeah. was rated X, um... But it wasn't like a porno movie. It was a, it was a, dra- a drama. It was a dramatic movie. And uh, believe it or not, it was um, Marlon Brando who was doing the butt fucking. <laughs> and he's, he's fucking this chick. I forget who, who the actress was. And he, he asks her to pass the butter. <laughs> oh, my God. I got to see so, this yeah. movie now. So there's there's butt sex in it. So that, that and that did cause a lot of controversy because not only were you putting anal sex in a major motion picture, but you were doing it with perhaps one of the greatest movie stars of all time. Yeah, and uh, what is to be assumed is a great delivery of an otherwise throwaway line past the butter. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, number nine is Natural Born Killers. Which, of course, is on here for the glorification of spree killing. Mm-hmm. I have seen this, and I was taken a little aback when I first saw it. Like, oh my God, look at what they're doing, you know? And it's all glorified. So, yeah, that was a very controversial mm-hmm. film. Yeah. Uh, number eight was, uh, and this is the oldest film on the list by far, uh, from 1915, The Birth of a Nation. Is that that KKK movie? It is a KKK movie. Now, the craziest <laughs> thing about it is that it may be about, you know, the KKK and, you know, uh, and it depicts them as being heroes. Huh. But it was actually a really good movie. Wait, like, what? It, it, yeah, it, it, it's actually considered a classic because of uh, the acting, the way it was filmed. It, there were filming techniques that are, con- you know, considered standard that were created by the birth of a nation. Wow! So, so here you have possibly one of the most important, you know, important movies of all time, and it's also one of the most horrific movies of all time. Yeah. Why does it have? Why would you know? It's all this clearly good talent apparently be wasted on such a vile mess. Well, I can answer that. It was 1915, that's why. Uh, I guess... I don't even know when the KKK started. Were they still new? 
Uh, they were, you know, I think they started in the late 19th century, but there were actually two distinct KKKs. Oh. Like, there was the original one, and it didn't actually last that long, and then there was the one that, you know, with the white hoods and all that. Mm-hmm, the ghosts. Yeah. Um, and number seven, we have The Last Temptation of Christ. Of course, any time you're doing anything with Jesus, <laughs> it's going to be controversial. Yeah. This one, this one in particular, because... The whole point, I don't know, have you seen this one? No, but I do kind of have a vague idea of it. The whole point of it was that uh, right before uh, Jesus, you know, gets himself killed, yeah. he, he's, he has this whole, like, vision of a possible future that he could have if he lived. So it's like this this alternate version of Jesus that, like, gets married and has kids and sort of, you know, leads, like, a normal life. Mm-hmm. If he just somehow got uh, past this whole cross business. Well, yeah, if he gave up his whole, you know, I mean, I, I think it was like the whole thing was like Satan was like showing him, hey, this is, you know, what what you could have if you give all this up. Otherwise, you're going to die horribly, you know. Mm-hmm. So that, that kind of, you know, the whole last temptation thing. I could see the controversy behind that. I could see it, but, uh, you know, he does choose to do, you know, you know, we, well, you know what he chooses. So yeah. it's not like, you know, it's not like that he fell into the temptation. It's like it was bestowed upon him. Yeah. There was actually a religious group that tried to buy the movie for uh, six and a half million dollars so they could destroy it. Oh, man. Yeah. Obviously that didn't happen. And yet, and yet the passion... Everyone's like, greatest movie ever! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Number six was uh, JFK. Really? And, uh, of course, you know, the thing is, like, we it's sort of taken for granted that there was definitely something strange going on with the Kennedy assassination. Mm-hmm. But people forget that before the movie JFK, people pretty much just kind of went with the official story. Oh. So, so oh. it... The the movie, in a way, is partially to blame for a lot of the conspiracy theories out there. So maybe it's not that the movie was controversial, but that it created its own controversy over the content. Well, of course. Well, that's that's the definition of being controversial, is that it created controversy. Oh, well, yeah, I guess so. But... <laughs> and number five, um, and this one might be kind of a cheat, but it's Deep Throat. Uh, which of course. I mean, it was porn. I mean, it's not like it was a real movie. I mean, this of course, this was back in 1972 when porn was shown in movie theaters. So you go in there, you know what you're expecting. I mean, really. You should. It was rated X. You have Linda Lovelace. I think it was the, the bizarre um, plot to it was that, like, her vagina was inside her mouth. <laughs> and Is that, that so, what it's about? Yeah, that's why it's called Deep Throat, so like she just, so it's all blowjobs. I thought it was just Deep Throat for the obvious. Well, <laughs> like, there's a well, it's not, it's not like her whole, it's not like her whole vagina, it, it's like her clitoris is in there. So that's she crazy. she gets no, so she doesn't like sex, and she goes to like a doctor, and they tell her that her clitoris is in her mouth, so the only way she can get off is by blowing dudes. <laughs> Yeah. You're killing me. That's I yeah, yeah. Isn't that great? <laughs> now you're like, hey, I gotta see this. It's considered to be one of the most classic pornos ever created, too. Oh man. Oh okay. <laughs> Yeah. Uh number four, um this is very controversial. For more recent years we have Fahrenheit nine eleven. Oh, the whole uh, what's his name? Michael Moore. Michael uh, Moore, one of the mo he's a maker of documentaries that has no idea what objectivity is. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. This, this dude goes in and he has a message to tell you. and He browbeats people. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've seen a little bit of it and it was it was sloppy. It was it was bullshit. Uh, to work, I've only seen uh, Bowling for Columbine and what's the one about GM? Um, um, the first ooh. movie. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, uh, why is your roommate IMing me saying disturbing you? I don't know. No, I'm just going to ignore it. Uh, number three, and this is the only one on the list that I never heard of. It's called Sallow. 
and it came out in 1975. Um, apparently, it has to do with World War II. It, it was uh, it's an Italian movie, I think. And, okay. Um, here, let me read the description. It says, set in the Nazi-controlled northern Italian state of Salo in 1944, four dignitaries round up 16 perfect specimens of youth and take them together with guards, servants, and studs to a palace near Mazaboto. In addition, there are four middle-aged women, three of whom recount arousing stories whilst the forced accompany... Okay, it's porn, in other words. Nazi porn. Yeah, Nazi porn. That, I can see that being <laughs> controversial. Oh, wow. Boy. Damn. Number two, and uh, good on you, you already mentioned this one, A Clockwork Orange. Hey, all right. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it was rated X, uh, which well, a lot really? of people don't realize. Yeah, it was, it was. Like, I it know was there's rated X. nudity in it, but it's not really uh, all that much sexualized. You know what, though? You say it, but uh, they considered it to be borderline pornographic. Mm -hmm. Got to remember, 1971. Yeah, that's true. You know? Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's a classic. Uh, of course. And at number one, and I do agree that this is the most controversial movie of all time, and it's another one that you already mentioned, The Passion mm -hmm. of the Christ. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. It's yeah, something that, yeah. that skips over 90% of the Bible and just gets to the parts where Jesus getting the shit kicked out of him. Gets to the good stuff, as they say. <laughs> I agree with the uh, what South Park said about it. That's not a movie. That's a snuff film. No kidding. It's just you know, let's watch somebody get the shit kicked out of them. Oh, brutally, brutally, yeah. and and just, and the violence was realistic. It, it's so. it is a snuff film. It's a very long, expensive snuff film. And and you know what? I mean, and a lot of the controversy was like it, that it was anti-Semitic. You know. And, uh, you know, people are saying, oh, it's not anti-Semitic, you know, the Jews came off badly because, you know, that's what they did. And, and then you find out that Mel Gibson, who had directed it, just straight out hates Jews. Mm. And, and that his father uh, denies that the Holocaust even happened. He does not shy so. away from his uh, hate, hatred of the Jews. Oh, no, not at all. So what do you think? I think that this was an excellent list. I think everything that was on here belongs on here. I can't of think course. of anything that's missing. I'm going to give it a 10. Um, I'd have to agree with you. It, from, from the sense, I haven't seen all the movies, but from what you just told me, filled in the gaps, it sounds like yeah. every single movie made sense. So, yes, yeah, I mean, I like, you it. haven't seen, yeah, I mean, you haven't seen Last Tango in Paris, but, you know, I mean, just from the description, anal sex. Anal sex. <laughs> and, like, this is a major movie in theaters, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like good. I said, it was it was Marlon Brando. This wasn't no direct to video fisting fireman movie. Uh, okay. Next up we we have a uh, um from Den of Geek. We did a bunch of them uh from Den of Geek last time. This is my only one this time. And this is a uh related to comic book characters, but also sort of related to movies. Obviously there's been a lot of superhero movies recently, including uh movies like Green Lantern, which is a character that had never appeared in a major motion picture before. There'd be and, more later this summer as well. Yeah, well Captain America appearing yeah. for the first time. Well no, actually there were two Captain America movies before. People forget about that, but Thor. Yeah. Yeah, and X-Men the First Class came out this year and that used a lot of the lesser-known X-Men. Mm -hmm. So this is a list of ten comic book characters that they would like to see appear in movies. Uh, not necessarily... Yeah, appear in movies. Not necessarily star in movies, mm -hmm. but... Um, you know, to be in movies. Like some of them are villains, some of them are like, you know, characters that could appear in an X Men movie, you know, things like that. Okay. So here we have uh ten ten comic book characters that should make their screen debut soon. At number ten, we have uh, you gotta be kidding me. Uh we have possibly the lamest X Man of all time, which is Dazzler. Um, oh, for real? You remember the original X-Men arcade game, and that was like, if there were five people playing, you know that the sixth one was Dazzler? Dazzler, yes. <laughs> Nobody wanted to play as Dazzler. They're saying that she should appear in, like, a, like a sequel to X-Men The First Class. 
Why? That's what I want to know. Why do they have a? I mean, ugh. Good lord. I mean, there's so many, so many better choices. If this is top ten, think of yeah. all the superheroes out there. Even number ten should be awesome. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, they're not all superheroes, of course. Oh. Some of them are supporting characters that they'd like to see appear in movies. You know what I mean? Or villains. Oh, or well, uh, comic book characters, then. There's yeah, so many, exactly. so many no, but, but, Yeah, but you're still right. Yeah. Uh, and the next one we have is Doctor Strange. And they would like to see him appear um, in not the next Spider-Man, but the one after it. Why the Which, one after, I wonder? Well, because we already know who, who's in the next Spider-Man. And we know that Doctor Strange's not in it. So uh, they're he, saying... That, even I don't. Who is in the next one? It's going to be the, the Lizard and... Um, um, uh, there's somebody else in it. I forget. The Lizard's definitely in it. Okay. But, um, yeah, they're saying that, you know, uh, it, Spider-Man does run into the mystic in the comics every once in a while, and that, you know, he usually does um, go to Doctor Strange for help with that sort of stuff. Yeah. The thing is, I don't know if that's such a great idea, because those stories are always terrible, so... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Far, far be it for me to judge something like that. Um, next up, we have uh, the Thing, and they're saying in in a reboot of the Fantastic Four, they want to see the Thing done in CGI rather than whatever the hell that was in the first two Fantastic Four movies. A fully CG thing? Well, they tried it with the uh, Hulk. Yeah, and he looked it looked right. I mean, say yeah. what you will about the movies, but it looked right. Yeah, like it looked so like. I, I do oh, agree with that. Yeah, I, I just, you know, this is interesting. They're saying that um, a good idea for a Fantastic Four movie would be to sort of play off the uh, success of X-Men the first place and do it retro, like set in the 60s. Because you know what? And I think that does make sense because the Fantastic Four were never cool. <laughs> they were like uh, leftover? Yeah, well, no, it, it's just that they were always they were always stuck in that sort of 60s aesthetic. Well, uh, Okay. Yeah, you know I what like, I mean? put, put, put them in prime. The main guy's fucking title is is Mr. Fantastic. Who comes up with that? That's like the worst name ever. Yeah, it's like, well, we're the Fantastic Four. I call Fantastic. Oh, great. <laughs> oh here's, an, here's an interesting one. Dark Side. They're mm -hmm. saying that they'd like to see Dark Side in um, a future Superman movie. Superman, yeah. Uh, it wouldn't be the next one, because we already know that the next one uh, involves General Zod. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know what, though? Okay, the first Superman movie was Lex Luthor. The second one was General Zod and Lex Luthor. The third one was <laughs> some white guy. The fourth one was, you know, Lex Luthor and, like, that fucking nuclear guy. The fifth one was Lex Luthor. And the sixth one's going to be General Zod. It is time to move on to other villains. True, but like you know, it's a whole reboot thing. That means you're allowed, yeah. I guess, to to try again. You know. Yeah, but I mean, the, I mean, like, okay, yeah, I get like in the Batman reboot they did the Joker, but they at least saved it for the second movie. Yeah, and, and they picked you know, you know I mean? like uh, the Raj Al Ghul and uh, Raj Al Ghul and the Scarecrow. Scarecrow, yeah, yeah, yeah so. something we haven't seen a million mm -hmm. times. Um, here's a pick that they pick for Thor two, uh, Surtur, a villain for. Uh, Thor 2, I'm not familiar with the character. I never really read the Thor books, but he looks like a giant Satan guy, so... Nice! That could, that could work. I'd be down with some Satan action. We some... hope that, we hate that, we'd hope that uh, Thor 2 would have, like, you know, a little bit more action. Uh, I, I never saw the, for the first movie, so I'm not that it, way. It was, it, was okay, it was okay, but it was like a huge, huge part in the middle where he basically doesn't have any powers and doesn't do anything, you know, special. So does he just sit around and bitch? Sort of, yeah. Uh. <laughs> it wasn't a bad movie, but it could have been better. Uh, here's a possible character to appear in a future Batman movie is Deathstroke. Deathstroke. Now, who was I? Uh, he he's the guy that looks like kind of like Deadpool. As a matter of fact, Deadpool was like a huge rip off of Deathstroke. But uh, oh, okay. I'll send you a picture of him. All right. I will get this picture, and you will get it and you will say oh I know that guy so here it comes mm -hmm. bloop and oh I know that guy <laughs> see 
The only thing is, is all right. I, you know, I agree that Deathstroke would make a cool villain for a movie, but mm-hmm. eh, Batman, he, you know, like he, he, he was, you know, usually in like, you know, uh, Teen Titans or, or Justice League or something. Uh-huh. I, I, I can't see Batman. I don't know. Uh, Batman on his own, uh, especially with the direction they've gone. Now. Yeah, yeah. Um. This next one's a two for Arnim Zoda, Zola and Modok as possible villains for the next Captain America. Uh, who they? <laughs> uh, you you know Modok because he's in Marvel vs. Capcom three. He's that guy with he's like just a giant head with like arms and legs. Oh really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Arnim Zola is is way lamer. He's like. He was a scientist who turned himself into a cyborg, but he, like, doesn't have a head. He has, like, a robot head. And instead of having a head, he has, like, a, a screen on his stomach that shows his face, and he, like, talks through that. That sounds kind of doofy. Yeah, it's very doofy. <laughs> but well, why did they pair them? What do you mean? Like, oh, I, you know what? I don't know. I, 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 they must have worked together a lot or something. Uh, yeah, I guess. I'm not, not that familiar with the characters, unfortunately, like their backgrounds or anything. So. Yeah. Um, for an- another possible for a future like X-Men first class movie would be X-Force. Oh. Now, the, thing about X- the thing about X-Force is that um, it, there's been a lot of different iterations of it. Okay. And the, the iteration that they're showing in the picture is um, it, uh, Angel, Psylocke, Wolverine, Deadpool, and some fucking guy that I don't know. A Phantom X, apparently. <laughs> and they're saying that, you know, obviously due to the copyright issues, they couldn't have Wolverine or Deadpool in it. No. Um, mm-hmm. But maybe they could pick somebody like Cable or Warpath or Domino or somebody. So like an like an X Men versus X Force or something like that. Why not just do an X Force movie at that point? Yeah, but you know I, what I'm. You know, I guess you'd have to call it like Marvel X Force, so the people kind of got it. Because be like, no, X-Men I mean it has a J- X in it. I mean I think it, no, I mean everybody. I mean that X Force was a very popular comic back in the day. It was basically just like a more militaristic version of the X Men. That's the whole premise. Hmm. More militaristic could put a little more action into it then. Exactly. Uh, next up, we have the Black Panther to appear in maybe a future Avengers movie. Hmm. Um, the weird thing is that I don't know. I don't think that these guys know who the Black Panther is because they got a picture of some white guy. Huh. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe the Black Panther changed. Uh... His skin you color? Got, Maybe that's got that superpower? Michael Jackson thing going on. Yeah. Um, and finally, we have Morbius, the living vampire, Ooh. to appear in a future Ghost Rider movie. Ghost Rider? Fuck uh. Ghost Rider. Why doesn't he... <laughs> How about Blade? No kidding, right? What, are you out of your mind? Why As a matter of fact, the original the original concept for Blade Two was going to have Morbius in it. Oh, so why did they turn it into that uh, freaky deaky vampires? Uh, I think that they they uh, they just I don't know. I think they just picked a different direction. Blade Two was the best one, so it's not like I complain about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd say this was an average list. I'm going to give it a, a six. Um, since I'm not all that familiar. I'll um I'll probably give it just a five out of ten, middle of the road. Five, okay. All right, next up, we're back to video games. Excellent. And this one's from Game Facts, or I, I guess a lot of people say Game FAQs. No, I say Game Facts. Always, I always said Game Facts. That's what I think of it as. And this is top ten abandoned game series that should hmm. be updated. More like Game Faps, am I right? <laughs> so basically these games uh they're either they haven't seen sequels in a long time or it was a long running series that just stopped. So hmm. number ten. Number ten, and I I have to agree with this one hundred percent. We need a new Act Razor game. Oh, um, they only made two of those, right? They only ever made two of them. Both, both, but uh, I'm from very familiar with the first one. Never played the second one, though. The second one, um, 
had only the action parts and not the town building, so it was a little controversial. Mm. But it was an excellent, excellent game. And it also had an amazing soundtrack, which you expect from Enix. And yeah. now that they're Square Enix, it would be cool if they would give us an Act Razor 3. Just saying. Mm-hmm. But how do you think it would go? Do you think they would keep... Do you, do you think they would put in the town building? Or do you think they'd go for more of a 3 d kind of they, action I think, game? I think that they, they would definitely go 3D action, but I think that you would have to have some aspects of the town building because the lack of the town building is part of what made Act Razor 2 not sell as well. And I assume if they did reboot it, they also just call it Act Razor. They probably would, yeah. They probably yeah. would just call it Act Razor, which I'm okay with, because it's yeah. been ye- many years. Both of them are on Super NES. Let's let's see it. You know, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Let's see it. Yeah, there you go. Um, number nine, uh, fuck this series, Earthworm Jim. <laughs> well... Earthworm Jim 3D kind of killed the series for a, you know almost permanently. If not, did you know for... that the guy the guy who created Earthworm Jim is like a like a vicious homophobe? Just thought I might throw that in there. He is? Yeah, he like apparently really hates gay people. Oh, well, that's very sad because I do like yeah. the Earthworm Jim games. I don't love uh... them, but I like them. I think they're vastly overrated, but moving well, on. And yeah. number eight. Number eight, and this is another one that I have to agree with 100%, and I never really understood why this series stopped at Streets of Rage. He, yeah. like it, it, was, had... it was popular. It sold well. They had Streets of Rage 1, 2, and 3. They were very solid it, games. And then it was, it was like when you thought of Sega Genesis, you thought of Sonic, and you thought of Fantasy Star, and, and you thought of, of Streets of Rage. Yeah. So... Why did it never appear on any other system like, you know, Sega CD or Sega 32X or Saturn or Dreamcast or any of the modern systems? I mean, yeah, bring back Streets of Rage. I totally agree with that. I I mean, I would play it, you know, if if you just Mm -hmm. take the basic elements of Streets of Rage, you know, give them nice graphics and, you know. I would go with... Even make it a downloadable title. Oh, yeah, there you go. Instead of going... 3D. Yeah. Like, fi- Final Fight kind of went that way, and it didn't turn out too good. Yeah. I would go with traditional, two-dimensional, but just high-res sprites. Yeah, like maybe even hand-drawn. Uh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Number seven, um, I never, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm mixed in this one. On one hand, I don't understand really why the series just kind of stopped. Maybe it lost steam. On the other hand, I never cared about it, so it's no skin off my ass, and it is Bloody Roar. Oh, I never really cared about the series either. Yeah, I mean, there's so many other great fighting games out there. Yeah. You know what? I think that they couldn't really do it. Like, if they tried to reboot it or just continue or something, I think everybody would associate it with furries. <laughs> hey, why I think furries one? have kind of ruined the whole idea of Bloody Roar. For why not take it a step further and and cater to that very strange audience? That that way. Jesse, I, yes. Here's a better idea. How about no? <laughs> uh, let's what the yiff, hell, man? Let's go yiffing in a scritch pile. Am I right? Oh, you know what? <laughs> I I don't even know what that means. I'm gonna move on here. Number six uh, is Bushido Blade. And that's an interesting one. That's another mm-hmm. one that I uh, never really understood where that one went. There were two of them, mm-hmm. and they were and then nothing. They were popular, weren't they? <laughs> uh, the first one was. The second one, I think that they it was a better game. They definitely balanced it more, but mm-hmm. I don't think they marketed as much. I think that Square at that point were trying to, I guess, only do RPGs. Yeah, I'm thinking that maybe it got kind of got swept under the rug with. Uh you know, any of the other games. Yeah, the concept of it, though, that it's, you know, think of it as, you know, if they were to take that concept and adapt it to a modern game, and, and you would have graphics sort of similar to, like, you know, Soul Calibur 4, but maintaining that very realistic uh, gameplay where, you know, when you stab somebody with a sword, that's the end of it. Yeah, there's no light bar, so to speak. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It... it I think it could be done even better today. And I think in today's market, it might actually do well, like that kind of style. I, I agree. Uh, number five, I, I don't think they should bring this back, uh, Dino Crisis. 
Dino Crisis wasn't that good. That's they why. It, really want to resurrect that series? Was yeah. That, what, like, was, what was the last one? Number four. Um. You know what? I mean, <laughs> I, I think I don't even know if there was a number four. Oh, uh, I, no, I'm, gonna, wait, I'm about I'm, to look. I'm thinking. Of, I'm about. You go ahead. You're thinking of Time Crisis? Yeah, Time Crisis. Oh, Dino Crisis. I think there was a three, but I think that was the last one. I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, I was thinking of Time Crisis 4. Now, according to this, Dino Crisis 3 was the last one. There was also a game called Dino Stalker on PS2, which was a spin-off. But it was more like a gun survivor game. Uh, Don't bring that one back. That that one belongs. Some, Some of them belong dead. Yeah. You know, uh, kill kill it before it uh, before it just embarrasses itself. Nuke it from orbit. Nuke it from orbit. Number four, we have the uh, Legacy of Cain Blood Omen series, and that was interesting because uh, you had the the original Legacy of Cain Blood Omen. Yeah. And then there was a, a sort of a half sequel, half spin off, which was Soul Reaver, and they sort of split into their own series. You know. Yeah, you had the Blood Omens and the Soul Reavers. And Soul Reaver did well, and Blood Omen just kind of, you know? Yeah, it just kind of faded out. It's not like we are exactly. ending this series or anything like exactly. that. Exactly. It just kind of, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, we, what do you think? of uh, Legacy of Cain, Blood Omen 3, does that sound like something you would buy? No, I'd probably, you know, see a trailer and go, eh, and then that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, Mega Man X. This one I agree with. One hundred percent agree. And if you talk, um, and if you talk to my friend Cyber Eclipse, she has been pining since X Eight came out for a new game. Yeah, and you know how I would do it mm-hmm. is you know how Mega Man Nine brought back the original series in eight bit glory. Mm-hmm. Let's do Mega Man X Nine in its sixteen bit glory. Hmm. Like Super NES style graphics. You know, I think I have to disagree there. I think how would how would you go ahead with Mega Man X then? I think X would ha- would do better in like a more of a high res, like a high res, like maybe thirty two or thirty two quote bits or like something something with more um, of an animation style, maybe even like a hand drawn sprite thing. Like, I don't know. I I I, I gotta say that. It, it, I, I don't think that would work for that series. I mean, they did have a cell shaded game, but that was an RPG. I, I, I think that, you know, Mega Man 9 really worked, and I think you got to follow that aesthetic. Well, I know I, I would totally play it because my favorite one, the, the original yeah. X, is 16-bit. Yeah. yeah, but that's the thing. It, that's everybody. Everybody likes one or two the best. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's picking, like, you know, six or seven as the best. Oh, seven. Seven it, sucked. It has problems. Yeah. Um, number two is Capcom versus SNK. Uh, we got three of them, and we want more. Wasn't the third one not, not specifically called Capcom versus SNK, though? Well, it was It, it was called SVC Chaos. Chaos, which, yes. Know, but the thing is, it was the same fucking concept. Yeah. Um, but then they, they went on to uh, Tatsunoko versus Capcom and now uh, Marvel versus Capcom 3. But you know what? If they could bring back Marvel versus Capcom after so many years, mm-hmm. less time has passed. Let's do another Capcom versus SNK. Sure. I mean, does SNK, do they still do stuff? Do they still... Uh, oh, yeah. The, uh, King of Fighters 13 came out in Japan not too long ago. Hmm. Well, yeah, then yeah. Well, why don't they? Sure, why not? Ah, they just got to get their heads together. And Number one, I I don't know. I mean, <laughs> this kind of like falls into the same category as Bushido Blade, only a lot less interesting. Oh. And it is Battle Arena Toshinden. Oh, yeah. That game. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, that, you know. I never played it, never cared to play it. Yeah. So I can't, I can't really say much on the, the subject. Yeah, they have a couple of honorable mentions, which I'll go through really quick. Double Dragon, mm. uh, Gunstar Heroes, Shenmue, Dragon Ball Z, Burst Limit, Final uh, Fight, and Xenosaga. Xenosaga? Ugh. Out of all of those, I think I would enjoy a new Gunstar Heroes the most. Me too. Just run around and blow shit up. 
and it, I think that would be a perfect uh, like you know virtual WiiWare console thing or, or, or Xbox Live Arcade or PSN type of thing. Downloadable. Keep it, yeah, I could keep yeah, keep it old school. Yeah. Just millions of explosion, mode seven graphics, just you know, <laughs> super oh, yes. fast game. Bring back. Mode what do you think? Seven. I think I think this was an above average list. I'm gonna give it a seven. Yeah, I'm gonna stay with you there and go with a seven. It was pretty average, I'd say. If I was to strike one thing off the list, it would be Earthworm Jim. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know how I feel about that series. Yes. Um, now, the next two uh, were actually uh, done in video form, so I have them written down. Ah, oh, good job. And they are both from... Scru- the next two are both from ScrewAttack.com, one of my favorite websites out there. Hmm, reliable source? And sometimes a reliable source. <laughs> They're fun. That's why I like them. Uh, first, we have ScrewAttack's Top 10 Worst Reboots and Remakes. Oh, I like these Top Worst lists. Yeah. Now, what do you think of when you think of a really bad reboot or remake of a video game? A bad reboot of a video game? Well, you mean like not like a sequel or anything like Square? Well, it, Point, it, right? it it could be it could be a sequel if it's something that kind of reinvents the series. That would be a reboot. Huh. Well, Sonic is always trying to reboot itself and failing. <laughs> yeah, a million times. Uh, Any particular game that you would expect to see on here? Game? Oh, we're, we're going specific games, not franchises? Yes, yes, uh, yes. The, there are games that are the worst reboots or remakes. Sonic 06? Yeah, well, that, you know, that's an obvious one. Okay, but here we have number 10. We have Bionic Commando. And they were very specific that they are not talking about the downloadable content with con- um, games, Bionic Commando Rearmed. They're talking about the 3D one. Oh yeah, because I've seen I've seen Rearmed and it actually looks pretty fun. But Rearmed is fine, but the the one that's in 3D, the gameplay isn't bad. But what's bad about it is they took everything that made it Bionic Commando and just made it very generic. The character was just some dreadlocked asshole and the plot twists <laughs> at the end he's looking for his wife and it turns out his wife is the bionic arm huh exactly <laughs> uh all right yeah the wife arm bionic commando <laughs> number number nine is the remake of conquer's bad fur day which was called conquer live and, and reloaded, reloaded. Yeah, they mostly Screw Attack mostly focused on the bad multiplayer, especially considering the fact that that's what they advertised about the game was the multiplayer. Well, they lay um, live is right in the title. Yeah, exa- right? exactly, exactly. While they say that the multiplayer was better in the original Nintendo 64 game, I would also like to mention that this was a censored version of the game. That's what I was going to bring up: the fact that they censored a game that was, you know, it was. Um, its selling point was its vulgarity. The, the original title was on the Nintendo 64. <laughs> you would think bringing it to Xbox 360, they wouldn't censor it. If anything, they'd make it, they'd reload it to be even more filthy and gross, you know? Yeah, yeah, but they didn't. <laughs> <sighs> number eight. Number eight, and i got to take on Bridget a, this a little bit. I do agree that it's a terrible game, but I'm going to get to that in a second. Pac-Man 2 The New Adventures. Now, I, I've done a video on this. I've actually played it and beat it. <laughs> You've beaten that? How do you have the... the How do I have patience? patience? For a, a Pac-Man <laughs> adventure game, and it's not even good. I remember renting it one weekend, and I just did nothing but play it. And then I would just pull my hair out, just bite my knuckles and go, no, you must have beat it. <laughs> and I eventually just figured it all out. Okay. Um, Frustrating the, uh, tell. <laughs> I do agree that it's terrible. However, it is not a reboot or a remake, and I'm going to explain why. The misconception from Screw Attack was that it was a sequel to the original Pac-Man. Hmm. They're saying that this is the official sequel to Pac-Man simply because it's called Pac-Man Man 2. 2. However... If you know the series, the official sequel to Pac-Man was Super Pac-Man. Super Pac-Man, yes. And then the Ms. Pac-Man? Ms. Pac-Man is not part of the series. Oh, right. Other company. Because it, it was not made by Namco. Right. Um, although it was great. but uh, Pac-Man 2 The New Adventures is actually a sequel 
to a game called Pac-Land that only ever came out in Japan. Hmm. And it was on um, a bunch of systems, including the Famicom, the MSX, the TurboGrafx-16, but mostly, you know, home computers. Man, people must and have it, been very it, confused when it came out on Super yeah, Nintendo. And it, <laughs> yeah, and it was, a, uh, it was an adventure game, just like Pac-Man 2. Hmm. But I don't agree that it belongs in the list because I don't think it meets the criteria. But I do think it's a terrible game. And it and in no way does it have any gameplay value related to Pac-Man. Like at least with yeah. Bionic Commando, you got the arm, you got the gun. Exactly. But this one, like power pellets, are a mere, you know, throwaway. Uh, throwaway. Thank you. Sidebar yeah. thing. Number seven is Golden Axe Beast Rider. Golden Axe had, like, a reboot? You, you know, that's the thing. It was obscure, Golden huh. Axe Beast Rider. Um, I mean, you think of Golden Axe, you obviously think of the original trilogy and maybe the spin-offs like uh, Golden Axe Warrior, which was a fighting game, or um, um, perhaps go- oh, the one that was, like, a Zelda-type game. Hmm. But Golden Axe Beast Rider, it was on uh, Xbox 360 and PS3. And the problem was that it was, for one thing, it was it was very generic, and and another thing is that there was only one character to play as. Ah, part of the fun yeah. of Golden Axe was picking your character. I mean, I mean, at least at least the one character was Tyrus Flair, the chick. Oh, but, okay. I mean, imagine if it was like the dwarf that you had to play as throughout the whole thing. <laughs> the dwarf is the one I'd always pick whenever I'd play Golden Axe. <laughs> well, he, you know, but he, but he, but imagine, you know, you three D reboot game around him. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was. Yeah, I didn't even hear of it uh, until Screw Attack. Not that list, but another list that they had done where they made fun of it. Uh. Um, number six. Now, I've never played this one, but Stuttering Craig from Screw Attack is very vicious towards this game. And you know who else is is uh, our mutual friend Ryoka Thirteen X. Aha! Yes. Okay. And this is uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Reshelled, which oh. is the remake of Turtles in Time. My brother played this and said it was very underwhelming. And I think that the reason that so many people find it to be underwhelming is that they it's based on the original arcade game and not the Super NES one. And that's why it has less levels. Yeah, I don't know why that's they wouldn't why, why they would go the extra good. mile and just include everything the Super NES one had. I have to I have to agree with you. Um, yeah, I, I haven't played it. It doesn't look that bad, but I you know if so many people are saying that the original is just fine and that reshelled sucks, they're probably right. Yeah, my brother said. Uh, because he had it on PlayStation, that uh, the controls also felt way wonky in, in comparison to the Super Nintendo version. They did make it faster, and that's probably why it throws you hmm. off, you know? Yeah. Um, at number... What am I up to? Number five... Five. We have fi- yeah, number five, we have uh, Final Fight X Streetwise. I've heard of it, but I never had a chance to play it. It was on PlayStation 2, and it was just bad. It was a joke. Is that the 3D one you were talking about? Yeah, it was. Well, there were two. There was one on the Saturn that was like a 3D one, but it was like a fighting game, kind of oh. like Virtual Fighter. Huh. This one was more like Final Fight, but it was it was just bad. And Cody turns into a monster at the end. I don't, I don't even. I don't even want to get into it. <laughs> I don't even want. The story was stupid. The gameplay was bad. I mean, they, bad they, game is bad. Just, Bad game is bad. For some reason, they shoehorned Cammy as a as a cameo in there. Uh, well, Cammy, yeah. cameo, Cammy the cameo. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Moving on. Ah, <laughs> oh, you and your fucking puns. At number four, <laughs> and you may not be aware of this one. I certainly wasn't until uh, they brought it up as Shadow Run. Now, Shadow Run started as a uh, a pen and paper RPG. Yeah, and and then it was a like a legitimate you know computer RPG for various systems. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know that there was a reboot of it that was just called Shadowrun, and it was a first-person shooter. Whoa, first-person shooter! 
I, I remember the one on Super Nintendo, and that's about it. Yeah, that's that's the one that most people would remember. It was on Super Nintendo. It was also on Genesis. There was a Sega CD version. It was originally a, a whole pen and paper thing. But they released... Um, it was only on um, Windows and Xbox 360. Huh. And not only was it... A, it had nothing to do with Shadowrun. There, it, it wasn't futuristic. There was no cyberpunk. There was no hacking. It was just a generic shooter. But here's the worst part of it. Mm. It's one of those types that's just, you know, multiplayer, like like Counter Strike or, or or Team Fortress Two or uh, uh, Quake 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 Wars, you know. Yeah. So um, yeah, and it's just this generic thing. It has nothing to do with Shadowrun. It was so bad that the company that made it went out of business, <laughs> and the server the servers weren't even up that long. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, it serves them right. Shit, right? I didn't even know about it until I saw this list. You mean uh, number three, and this is the one that you mentioned, Sonic the Hedgehog for 360 and PS3. Uh, what yeah. the fuck? You know what I love is that, you, you know, one of the defining characteristics of the old school Sonic games is the, the classic loop-de-loop that you would go through. Yeah. And if you play Sonic uh, 2006 version, you could actually walk up them slowly get yourself <laughs> upside down and stop turn around jump it's like the gravity goes along instead of having to have momentum it's just like the floor curves well that's terrible how could you misunderstand the concept of sonic the hedgehog that badly not to mention the whole furry fetish plot that's going with on with that princess girl that's weird uh she's got to make out with sonic and uh. Number two is this, and I really thought this was going to be number one. When I, as soon as I saw the title of the list, mm. I thought number one has got to be Bomberman Act Zero for Xbox 360. Oh, I uh, never played that. That bad, eh? If you love Bomberman, I do. You will hate this game and want it destroyed. You know what? You're going to hate. I'm going to show you a picture of the cover. <sighs> And you're automatically going to hate it just based on the picture of the cover. Oh, Here it comes. Okay, click and clack. <laughs> what the hell is that? Apparently, that's Bomberman. No, it's not. I agree. It looks like some uh, dude, like a reject from Halo or something. Exactly. And it was really, it was like the same level over and over again. The controls are bad. The camera oh. is bad. It, it was just... The people from Hudson Soft even make fun of it now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, wow. I, I, I did like the uh, Bomberman games on the 64, so... I don't yeah, know, but those were I, at least... I don't, I don't know how they could have gone wrong with this, with the concept. <laughs> they tried. They had to have tried to go wrong, you know what I mean? You uh. can't fail that badly on accident. <laughs> And finally, and I didn't think of this much, and they do have a point, uh, Space Raiders is number one. Space Raiders being the uh, grim and gritty reboot of Space Invaders. Oh, God, really? Yeah, it, it came. It, it's very obscure, actually, but I actually have it for oh. GameCube because, uh, you know, I have a lot of GameCube games. Mm -hmm. It also came out on PS2, and it was like a urban setting and, and a lot of the levels you were in like a dirty alley with these alien guys slowly crawling towards you and instead of the she you know the shields from space invaders they'd be like yeah. trash cans or something uh, 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 yeah uh, yeah exactly and there was this ridiculous plot that just tried to be gritty and grim and it was just stupid how do you screw up space invaders that's just leave it as it is it's just aliens you know how you slowly you going down you know how you screw up Space Invaders? By trying to do a Space Invaders game for a modern system. You know, do you know the defining characteristic of the original Space Invaders was a glitch? Uh, what was the glitch? The fact that all the, all the creatures move really slowly at first, and then as you shoot at them, they get faster and faster. Yeah. It, it wasn't designed that way. It's actually slowed down only because there's so many sprites on the screen. Oh, so they were originally supposed to go crazy fast. Yes. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> that exactly. would have been a balls hard game. It would have been a terrible game too. Hmm. All right. 
our final list. Oh, we had to rate this one. We didn't rate it. Oh. Um, I, you know what? I, I, you know, I'm gonna, I, I disagreed with Pac-Man because I, I feel it doesn't meet the criteria for the list, but mm. I have no other issues with the list, so I'm going to give it a nine. Ah, uh, I was, I was feeling an eight out of ten would seem eight appropriate ten, for okay. it. Yeah. All right, so we're pretty much on the same page. Yeah, roughly, yeah. Final list of the day, and this is, it couldn't be simpler than this. This is from Screw Attack, the top ten Mega Man Robot Masters. Oh, uh, I even, or I sort of put out a list like this, but it was favorite one, one Robot Master from every game. Well, this is interesting because they do have um, most of the games represented. Well, well that's refreshing. Uh, no, but nobody from six, seven, or eight. Hmm, all right. But everybody, all the other ones are are represented. Um, the criteria was how cool he is, how good his weapon is, and how good the stage is. So basically, the whole package. <laughs> uh, oh so, wait, I, I, I gotta correct myself. My list is for the top Robot Master music. These, these are the oh, actual okay. Robot Masters here. Yes, these are the Robot Masters, but they're the criteria not only the Robot Master himself, uh, but also how useful package. the weapon is. Yeah. And how cool the stage is. So it's everything. Got it. Number 10, uh, we have Gravity Man from Mega Man 5. And they included this mostly due to the weapon, the Gravity Hold, which uh, not only is extremely useful because it basically wipes out everything on the screen, but if you stop to think about yeah. it, it's really kind of a cruel weapon because it sends the enemy robots falling upwards into the <laughs> sky where you could only assume that they burn up in the atmosphere or something. <laughs> <laughs> and also the level was pretty cool yes yes it, they said uh, it was like Mario Galaxy before there was a Mario Galaxy I'm surprised they didn't use that element in more like future titles yeah yeah you would th- well I, I maybe they couldn't th- I think they did it in a Mega Man X game but oh. yeah, maybe they couldn't figure out a way to do it I don't know um, number 9 is uh, Blade Man from Mega Man 10 personally I don't think Blade Man was all that memorable but okay no i didn't find him that memorable i found him kind of tough yeah he was tough yeah most of them in 10 were tough yeah the levels were easier than nine but the the bosses were harder oh yes i agree with you there number eight was uh magnet man from Mega Man 4 not only was it a cool level and a cool boss but you know Mega Man magnet, 3? magnet Mega Man 4 i thought magnet Mag- man i thought magnet man was Mega Man 3 you know what? You could be right. I have four <laughs> written down here. Let me look. You know what? I think you are right, actually. I think you're actually think below Mega Man's head in this in the screen, in the select screen. <laughs> I'm going to look it up because you might be right about that now that I think of it. I don't know why I wrote four down. Maybe, yeah, it, uh, let's see. Mega Man 3. Don't they have a friggin' list here? Mag- yeah, Magnet Man. Yeah, okay, so it's Mega Man 3. I don't know why I wrote down number 4. Maybe it's a typo. Ah, uh, whatever. Yeah. So actually, then, there's nobody from 4 on this list. Huh. Huh. That's unfortunate. Include, He's your like, favorite. Or that's your fave. That's my favorite, yeah. I, I would have included Pharaoh Man on there, but okay. Um, mm-hmm. Magnet Man, yeah, the, the weapon is really what put him on there, though. Yeah, it's a pretty cool weapon. Pretty useful. It, yeah, definitely. Number seven from the original Mega Man, we have Gutsman. I was waiting for him on there. Da-da. Gutsman. Da-da. Yeah, he has the most <laughs> recognizable ass in video games. Yes. And uh, he's so badass, he doesn't need a weapon. He just picks giant rocks up and throws them at you. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, he uses his guts. da <laughs> yes. uh, Number six is Shadow Man from Mega Man 3, the... Explanation just being, he's a ninja. Uh, yeah, I guess he's a ninja. Luckily, he's not wearing a bright orange suit. <laughs> oh God, orange <laughs> pajamas, right? Yeah. Uh, he did. He did have a cool weapon too. It was a uh, multi-directional. And, it it, it uh, didn't go as far as the metal blade, though. But it was still yeah, useful. Yeah, but it but it was the closest thing to the metal blade in yeah. Mega Man Three. For Mega Man Two, at number five, we have Quick Man. Oh, man, what his, his level bastard. frustrated me for years. <laughs> it's not that hard, but it definitely takes some raw, just, you know, reflex to get yeah. through it, you know? You have to well, be yeah, quick. But... Um, his music, you know, is classic. The quick yeah, boomerangs, pretty... I mean, you know, 
definitely agree with the inclusion. Totally. Number four from from Mega Man Nine is Galaxy Man. Uh, and once my, again, hmm? what were you gonna say? Uh, my favorite Rod Master music from uh, Mega Man Nine actually is Galaxy Man. Really, I I preferred the uh, Tornado Man. Oh yeah, a lot of people do. Yeah. Yeah. I personally, if you were gonna pick any of them from Nine, I I, I wouldn't have picked Galaxy Man. No. I think his weapon is pretty freaking cool too, and I like his the weapon. The weapon is cool. I will agree with that. I like his design but, um, too. He, he, he's, he looks he's, he's so different from the other ones, you know, and just his bizarre makeout. Yeah, I mean, it is a classic design. I just I don't know. When I think of uh, Mega Man Nine, I, I think of Tornado Man. Oh yeah, he he does have a pretty good theme, and he, he certainly is unique in the way that he can. Uh, yeah, you know, summon tornadoes and all that business. Yeah, he, yeah. he's pretty cool. Um, number three from Mega Man Three, the third robot master on this list from Mega Man Three is mm. Skull Man. I mean, that's from Mega he's... Man Four. Oh, see, that's you know what? I switched the two. Okay, you know what? <laughs> all right, I switched the two. That oh, sucks. Hey, okay, you got Mega Man Four in there. Yeah, there you go, Skull Man. I mean, how many fuckers did he kill to make that level? No, it's nothing but just dead people. Bones and skulls and rib cages and spines and every even robots, the ladders are made out robots of robots made out of bones. Yeah, even the ladders are made out of bones in that level. Yeah, it's really a cool aesthetic. It's got a cool soundtrack too. Number two, possibly the most classic robot master of them all, Cut Man from the original Mega Man. Mm. Um, you you know the music, you know the stage, and they brought up an interesting point. A lot of people were not used to the thought of selecting your stage, and a lot of people just saw press start and press start. And what was the default thing that the cursor was on? Cutman stage. Cut so for yeah. a lot of people, that was the first stage ever. So it also has that nostalgia factor, and his weapon rules. Yeah, the uh, cut blade, whatever the actual, whatever the full name is. The boomerang cutter. Boomerang cutter. Thank you. Yes. And number one, and you know what it is, so just go ahead and say it. Metal Man? Of course it's Metal Man. <laughs> it can't be anything but Metal Man. Yeah. I may, th- I may think that Mega Man 2 is underrated, overrated, but me- Metal Man can never be overrated. He's fucking metal! First of all, he's, he's metal as fuck. Second of all, his weapon is the best fucking sub-weapon out of any Mega Man game ever. No kidding. And and lastly, um, it it works on like almost everybody. It and can pretty much almost replace your regular arm cannon, which is what I eventually do when I'm playing by myself. Yeah, you wind up just using it all the time. And also, the level music, my favorite in Mega Man Two, amongst the Robot Masters. Yeah. Now, um, how would you, how would you rate this particular list? Um, in, in terms of uh, usefulness and overall, out of 10, yeah. I'd probably have to put it up there with, uh, I'll say, I'm going to give it another 8. Another I'm going to be a little less kind. Mm-hmm. Because I feel that we should not completely ignore Mega Man 6, 7, and 8. Mm-hmm. Especially that Mega Man 7 had characters like Slash Man... And uh, who can forget, um, what's that fucking guy's name? Uh, noise no, Man? Oh, it, uh, Shade Man? The, the no, no, Noise... No, Spray uh, Man? No, you're right, it was Shade Man, but he had the Noise Crunch. crunch that weapon yeah. that just yeah, that it just bounced off of the wall, and then it powered up immediately. And I mean, and then, you know, Mega Man 8 was also... Uh, it, it was a bizarre game. Yeah, yeah, wait a minute, why wouldn't Shade Man but, be on there? Because... Like yeah, his level. He was a he up, was a vampire. I mean, a robot also, vampire. You could also with, make with, it so that his level music was ghosts or ghouls and or ghosts and goblins, whatever. Ghouls and go. Yeah, you know, and that's weird because um, I, I people say you have to do something for that to happen, but it always just happened for me. I don't know what you do to trigger it. I think you just hold a button or something. I don't think so because it always just loaded like that for me. Oh, so you just always assume that they were like, oh, it's an alternate. Yeah, I, di- I didn't know that there was an alternate, that that was the alternate. Huh, funny. Who know- yeah, who knows, you know? Huh. 
But, um... You know, and Mega Man 6, all right, that one had a lot of generic stock guys, like, you know, like Night Man and Tomahawk Man and whatnot. Plant But 7... Plant Man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, there was also Mega Man and Base. It, it, uh, yeah, but it used a lot of characters yeah. from 8 as well. It used two ca- two characters. It was a lot of characters. It used two. It reused Tango Man and Astro Man. The other six were completely original. Oh, well, then, yes. You know what? You know what? I've never beaten that one. That's the only one I've never beaten. I've never beaten it either because I found it frustratingly too hard. You know what? That fucking uh, Burner Man just every single time just destroys me. I don't know what it is, but Burner Man is an asshole. And you know, I don't know if I'm ever going to beat it. I don't know if I ever have the gumption to go, you know what, I'm going to sit down and actually play Mega Man and Base to the end. I'll do it. Mm-hmm. I'll do it. Alright. What is going on over there? A uh, plane's landing. <laughs> you live near an airport? all that close really we just live in a zone where they happen to fly very uh near the wow. ground yeah. that's the f- but i always talk to you and it's the first time i've ever heard a fucking airplane start landing oh yeah well it happens <laughs> you're uh, jesse you're not an al-qaeda are you um <laughs> you can, think about it can, can, can we erase this part of the uh <laughs> no <laughs> no <laughs> i'm the leader <laughs> <No>. <laughs> God. Well, that's that's all 100 lists. And uh, I wanted to talk about one thing before we stop. Mm-hmm. And I want to get your opinion on this before I go ahead and say this for real. What do you think of the possibility of the, the people out there, the viewers, submitting their own lists for us to critique? You mean like they come up with the list or they research yeah. and find lists? Yeah, like, like my idea is they could, well, they, they, I have had people find lists. I mean, one, I, I forget which one, but one of the lists on here was suggested by somebody. Oh, cool. But, um, no, like if they f- make their own list, you know, they could private message it to me or whatever and, and we could critique. What do you think? Do you want to do that? I like that concept. Let the okay, fans so decide. Every, let the fans, well, l- let us decide if our fans can put together lists or not. Uh, all right. <laughs> that's cause we're, you know, because we might say they suck. Yeah, that, that's one thing you got to be prepared for, is if you do come up yes. with your very own list, and we will say who you are, then um, yes. be prepared for either ridicule or praise. You never know. Or we might be just like, meh. Yeah, I guess. Well, it's, it's sort of the same thing with requests. Like, people say, hey, I made a game, or I made, like, a Super Mario World hack or something, yeah. and, and they're like... Uh, would you would you do a video on it? I'm like, sure, but you have to know one thing. If I think it sucks, I'm going to be brutally honest. <laughs> and they're always like, oh, it's okay. And it's always funny when it's a Super Mario World hack because they're all terrible. Yeah, I mean, I've made my share of Mario hacks, but... <laughs> that, that's just well, you know what? Yeah. I, there's one there's one guy in Age Noria that has sent me two good games that he's made so far, so he's two for two. All right, well, way to go, buddy. You know. And then the, you know, Chronicles of a Dark Lord, I wound up working for the company, so. So it's got to be good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, hey, you want me to do some graphics for you? And they're like, yes. <laughs> so that, that'll that be it. Uh, overall, pretty good list this time. Nothing too terrible. Yeah, like, uh, I, I think there was just that one list where we were like 5 out what of 25. The you like three yeah, yeah out the, of first 25. List. the first list. Yeah. That was the the top 25 consoles, also known as What the Fuck is IGN Smoking? <laughs> yeah, that was IGN too, wasn't it? Yeah. You know what though, their 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 they their lists are almost always like that. Uh, they did a good they did a good one once and it's something that I'd like to do on list critics, but it is a top 100 list. Ooh. So it would take up a whole episode. Maybe one day we'll do it. It's top 100 best super villains of all time. Oh, that is and interesting. The, only thi- I took major, major umbrage with their pick for number one, but other than that, I thought it was great. <laughs> All right, well, then I look forward to it, then. All I say is that the one that was number two should have been number one. I'll take your word for it. Well, well yeah, maybe we'll get to that one day. All right. But another another great episode of The List Critics. I believe so. There were some technical difficulties, but we got around it. Well... Yeah, you know, it happens. Yeah. 
you know, we, when we do two-hour episodes, somebody's internet is bound to be cut off or something like that. Yeah, yeah. something's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Something's got to give. Mm-hmm. All right, well, we'll see you guys. See y'all later. Indeed. This is NecroVMX, out. This is Armageddon Time. See you next time. <laughs>